Welcome to the Green Wasp Removal YouTube channel. In this episode, we continue training and mentoring the Manchester University Wasp Survey Team as they remove a very active bald-faced hornet's nest that was attached to the side of a residence hall on campus. We'll show you how the team walks through their safety checks and gets ready to go for every job. The team leader is responsible for checking the entire crew, make sure everybody has a good solid suit, Zippers, veils, seams are all solid and can't allow any wasps to pass through into the suit. Once the team leader is done with this, they then will go ahead and pick out the gear used for the job for that day. And then they're on to the work. For this job, team leader Jaden had to wear the backpack rig, which has a remote control in the front and a solid harness in the back. And it allows him to take it up trees or take it up ladders. In this case, there was a large hedge right underneath the nest and that made it very awkward to reach so we had to come up with a way to get up on a ladder and extend a pole over the hedge to try to get to where the nest was they did a great job trying to figure this out and they were able to collect a lot of wasps for venom immunotherapy the team was able to share the backpack rig that way nobody ends up with fatigue while they're working on ladders at height as always, they did an excellent job working as a team. It's always a pleasure to watch these guys work so professionally. The nest was in a dangerous location where anybody trying to maintain the landscaping or trim hedges or wash the windows would be at risk for being attacked by these wasps. We'll show you how the team collects the adult wasps first to reduce the swarm and then goes up and actually removes the nest physically from the structure. They capture it inside a bin and then they can relocate it where we can incubate it back at the lab and this allows the many pupating wasps inside the nest who are still inside their white silk caps like you see here to hatch out in captivity where they can be collected later for venom immunotherapy we'll show you how the team cleans up the pheromones and removes all the nest debris and then we'll walk you through the freezing process to show you how we freeze our live specimens to preserve their venom for biomedical use we use dry ice for that as you see here once the wasps are frozen solid through CO2, we then go ahead and transfer them into a specimen bag, which is dated and marked with the species. Then they're ready to be stored in the chest freezer for the season. We'll also show you how we prepare a habitat for the incubation of the brood comb. As you see here, once the brood comb is put inside the incubation habitat, it can stay in there for weeks at a time. And every few days, the pupating wasps, which are in these silk caps that you see here, they keep hatching out. So every few days, there's dozens more to collect on this nest. It was very productive. It was a great one to have for incubation for venom immunotherapy purposes. We'll take you back now to August 5th, and we'll show you the entire job from start to finish. As always, thanks for riding along with us. Please remember to like, share, subscribe, and comment to let us know you're there. Enjoy the show. All right, we're at the MU campus today on August 5th, 2024. As you can see here on the edge of this residence hall, we have a bald-faced hornet nest today. So the team is currently getting suited up to take on this bald-faced nest, which is very active today. A lot of foragers coming and going. Here on the edge of the building, as you see, a very active bald-faced hornet nest. Glico Vespula maculata. So the team will deal with this one today. So today's August 5th, 2024. We're taking on a bald-faced hornet nest over here at uh, Schwamm Hall, which is one of the residence halls here at MU campus. And today, our team leader is Jaden. He's gonna walk our team through the safety protocols when they suit up. And then he's gonna pick the gear that we're gonna use for this job today. Each week, a different member of the team is the team leader. And they're all experienced enough now to handle that. As the team gets dressed up, they're all wearing relatively loose fitting clothing underneath. Jaden has a full kind of a jacket with a high collar. They have loose fitting clothing because that's much better for preventing stings. They have loose fitting suits, loose fitting clothing underneath. You never want to have tight fitting clothing when you're dealing with wasps. But whatever you can do to maximize the distance between your skin and the stinger, uh, the better.
So the cooperative effort when you get dressed into your suits and you begin the safety checks is very important. Whenever you work with partners, you'll see Jaden walk through the safety protocols here where they check zippers, nets, and seams. The team lead does that on every job and makes sure everybody's squared away for the work and as safe as possible. So the team leader, he'll go through safety checks with each member of the team, checking their seams, their veils, their zippers. And the point is to try to not allow any live insect into your suit. You can check the everything but the gloves. <laughs> I did check that. All right, we're feeling pretty safe and ready to go. Yeah. All right, let's do it. We get the, the back the back, and then the attachment hose that's down there, the deep maculatory containments because those are both these ones. I might need to, because I know it's pretty big, extra duct tape just in case. And then, um, from here, I specifically use the spatula and the tongs to get uh, the paper off in this and then just scrub it off afterwards. And then to clean up, I'll just use everything in here with the uh, essential oil spray to get rid of the pheromone and the scrub to clean up afterwards so that the boss don't come back. All right, great. So we've got our back here, we've got our nest removal gear, and we've got our clean up gear and that's what we're going to use today thank you so we glove up with bald-faced hornets and any type of wasp when we're dealing with them up close when we remove the nest we'll actually sometimes use two pairs of gloves so they can't sting through your glove normally when the glove is dry the glove is pretty well protecting your hand when the glove gets wet through water or dew on the greenery or sweat if the leather gets soft it's a good idea to have a second pair of gloves all right, Jane's about to fire up our BVAC. It's what we use to collect the wasps. Generally, the first part of the job is to start collecting the main guard force inside, which is a bunch of adult female workers. He's gonna to try to extend this pole as far as he can, get up close to the nest. If we can't quite reach, we'll set up a ladder. But if he gets close about where he is, typically that's good enough to start collecting. So we're gonna take a look and see if this will give him enough extension toward it. It may or may not be a good reach. If not, we'll set up on the cement. Is that better? Okay, then I think this will work. I think, Jaden, you're probably going to have to wear the backpack. Is that okay? Yeah, I can do that. Okay, come on down. We'll get you rigged. Jaden now has the backpack rig on. He's got a remote switch in the front that will help him turn it on and off. And it's secured to the back, so he's ready to go. He can climb with this in trees. He can climb with this on ladders. So for today, we're just going to help him get up there and climb, and I'll hand you the pole hose when you get settled. <laughs> Okay, be real careful, take your time up there because your balance is a little different with the pack on. And you don't want to get up on the highest rung, you just want to use the high rungs as your stabilization against your legs. Let me know if you're comfortable with that reach. If not, we can move the ladder in a little closer. All right, the collection is starting to work inside the container. We see hornets starting to get sucked up. That's what we're looking for. 
So we'll collect as many as we can on this initial attack because they'll come out to attack as the guard wasps for this nest. And we like to round those up and collect as many as we can before we go in to remove the nest. So this process that Jaden is doing really prevents swarming and makes the entire system work a little safer for everybody involved. done is we've taken a secondary pole to support the main pole and that prevents fatigue for the operator on the ladder and that's very important to keep the ladder operator as safe and comfortable as possible the more fatigue you have when you're up on ladders the more chance there is of an accident swarm is significantly reduced now as we have contained many of the initial attackers so now it's just a matter of patience and staying close to the hole try to get as close as you can maybe the closer you are the more they'll respond by trying to attack the black part of the collection device and that gets them sucked up a little quicker How's your fatigue? You okay up there?
Let's check suction. It looks pretty good. We're getting a good collection of workers in this container. We may want to switch it out here shortly. Right now we've collected enough workers that we're going to switch out the bottle that we collect them in and get a fresh specimen bottle. That way the vacuum pressure inside the bottle doesn't get too clogged with wasps. So they're trying to spray me with venom and they're trying to sting me through the veil. That's why we use these extra visors, keeps them off the face. So Jaden is rigging up a lease with the backpack and getting the remote switch close enough so she can operate it while she's on the ladder. And we've got a new bottle rig. That way we don't have too many of the wasps that are already in the collection clogging the suction device. You see the perforated tube in the screen. If there's too many in there, they will clog that up. So we get a fresh bottle on and that helps. Even closer, give it another three, four inches, right up against next to it. From your perspective, it's hard to see, but we can see it easier. So go another couple inches forward. Yeah, maybe one more step up the ladder. Great, a little closer and you're good. There you go. Right up in there. Is that good? Yep. yep. Hold it right there. Keep it steady and I think you'll be able to get the rest of them from there. We're already starting to see a number of them get collected. That's what you're looking for. This is going to be a pretty high population nest because we're catching it about mid-season, so it's getting close to peak population. Reducing the population quite a bit. Let's have you go a couple inches closer. Make sure you're letting the pole do most of the work at least and letting the support do most of the work so you're not getting fatigued. We can adjust that if it's bothering you. Oh no. 
Good. So hold the ladder, will you? Jillian, just kind of make sure the ladder's stabilized. Good? Yes, that's better. Hopefully it stays that way. Okay. Good. Okay. There you go. Thanks. Okay. All right. Jillian, try to keep one hand on that ladder, will you? Because eventually it'll start to settle into the soft earth and we want to make sure she's stable. Looks like we're starting to see a great reduction in the population flying around. This is because we've collected now most of the attacking workers that came out initially. What we have a lot of now is returning foragers that were out in the environment collecting pest insects, collecting nest building material. They're returning back and realizing there's an attack pheromone in the air. So that's why they come back and they get stirred up as they try to enter the nest. But there's less and less attack pheromone in the air as more of them are being collected. So we're starting to see them calm down. The numbers are reducing. It's what we want. Elise, how's your fatigue? You okay? Uh, I'm like a six out of ten. Right, we're getting pretty close to when we're going to move the ladder up here anyway. So maybe we'll just let her finish up because most of the swarm is now contained. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring this ladder up to this raised cement deck and we're going to set it up here so that when we remove the nest, we'll have better access. I'm going to start tapping it out. Jaden, if you're able to, yeah, toss it right up here, will you? What we're going to do now is we're going to tap the nest to try to get a few that are hiding in there to come out. How are you doing? You doing okay for fatigue? Are you okay for fatigue? I'm okay. We're so close. I just got to finish it. No problem. Can you move the pole to the right again? There we go. Let's crank up your pressure a little bit. Do what? Turn up the pressure a little bit. She can. There you go. That'll help. Come forward. Right there.
Okay, let's do it. Let's go ahead and move on to nest removal. We'll bring the ladder up here. Good job, Elise. Good job, Jaden and Jillian. What we're gonna do now is take the nine foot ladder, bring it up to this deck, and then we'll go up and remove this nest. All right, so we temporarily have capped the collection container so that we can remove all of the gear up to this deck, which is an elevated deck about four feet off the ground. And that gets us close enough to the nest to do the physical removal part of the job, which is the next phase. All right, grab the other end, will you? Great, right, let's just go ahead and lean it up here for a second. This main beam so we don't hit the glass. Keep it nice and centered there for a second. Once they come up here to stabilize this, we'll get somebody up on the ladder to start scraping. And we'll drop it into a container. If you guys could please grab one of the plastic containers. Jillian's grabbing the essential oil and soap and water mix. That's what's in the pump sprayer. And once we pull this nest down, we'll spray the whole area down to deter wasps from nesting there again in the future. Yeah, you can get it rigged. So we'll do a little collection from close up here. And then we'll, uh, once we collect a few more, we'll get it scraped. Yeah, be careful. You're real up close to the edge. Just back you off a little bit. Get the largest container for now. Yeah, we'll try to drop the whole nest, I think, right in. Yeah, let's drop the whole nest. I'll relocate it to my property. Take your time and get really good stability before you try to turn around. going to drop. Are we good? I think so. Way more coming out now. Yeah. That's good. As soon as we get it dropped, turn it over to Jaden. Oh, oh, oh. Make sure you got it. <laughs> okay, and then... Get you got it? it? Yeah. Alright, cap it off. Yeah. And then keep, the, keep it up there so that they'll keep targeting the whole of the collection yeah, device. Top, maybe, it's, Great. Of keep it right up next to the paper. Okay. All right, let's get you down, Jillian, just for safety for the time being while we do some collecting. All right, now, everybody mind your footing, man. We're right on the edge of this cement deck, so be careful. Good job. I said three. It was three. Yeah, I'm 
Let's take a look at it. Hand it right up, we'll get a good shot of it. It was one big one, a little bit smaller than a small one. Oh, wow. Yeah, it looks beautiful. Let's keep that paper. Yeah, that looks great. That's a good looking nest with a ton of pupating wasps. We'll be able to incubate that really well. We got a ton of wasps out of your two nests. I put them in a free range environment where they can come and go. I've got dozens of them out of there already in incubation. This one will be the same. Yeah, this one's got a lot of potential. The rest of that can go in here. Yeah, we need to get this stuff. Yeah, we can. I'm not seeing any of this. All right, that's good. Yep. Let's start the cleanup phase. All right, now this will be a little tricky. So again, let's stabilize the ladder really well. Anything else? Okay, we'll get the scraper stuff out now, the scrubber brush and the, the fluids. For that, I'm gonna go ahead and reset the ladder. Yeah, let's do that just for stability. I think it's a good call. Really engaging my core. Good. What Jillian is doing here is she's removing the pheromones. And when you're scrubbing, scrub everything out away from us, okay? There you go. She's scrubbing all the pheromones off and removing all the nest debris. And this will deter the last of the foragers that are out in the environment from coming back. I'll step up there myself and do the outer edge because it's a little more tricky because of the edge being dangerous, okay? okay. So whenever you get the, that part done, let me know, I'll go up. Okay, looks good. Watch your footing stepping off. What do you got? Let me see that, Louise. Fantastic. That looks great. How'd they do? They didn't get too much oil, right? Nice. They look great. Okay. All right. Good job, guys. Let's have all you guys go ahead and dismount and reload some gear. In the meantime, I'll just do the last of this scrub. Can we just hand stuff? Let me see what's out there. Yeah, we got a little bit of debris here. So. Hey, Jaden, am I getting that? Uh, you got a little bit more, a little bit of left. I mean, right, right, right there. A little bit more spray. Does that look okay? Yep. Area's been cleaned. Another job from the Manchester University WASP survey team. Well done. Good job, guys. Way to nail it. So here's our nest for today. Really active. Lots of pupa, lots of larva, some new eggs. As you can see, the larva is very active. That's a great nest to have. You can see the queen cells here on the top. This top layer that you see, it's actually the bottom layer when it's flipped over the proper direction. But these are all gonna be queens next year, the ones being born in these big cells, as opposed to smaller workers. These are gonna be your reproductives that hibernate over the winter and then start a new nest in the spring. our collection for today a lot of workers it's a good high population nest and lots of pupating wasps ready to come out in the next generation or two and we'll collect those in captivity so the first thing we do back at the field lab when we get in from a job 
is we take our collection of live wasp specimens. In this case, it's Delico Vespula maculata, or bald-faced hornet. Not a true hornet, they're actually aerial yellow jackets by taxonomy, but they are often called hornets. But we're gonna take them and put them into the dry ice. So when we open up the dry ice container, there's several layers of insulation. We remove that to expose the ice. And this is rice. It's uh, frozen carbon dioxide in small pellets. They call it rice. We're gonna go ahead and scoop some out to make room for the containers. All right, then we're gonna put our containers in. We're gonna bury them in ice. It's important that they are underneath the ice. The reason for that is that CO2, the gas, and the cold moves in a downward direction. So you want your specimens underneath the ice and we cook them like that for 15 minutes in the ice and that will make them as solid as ice cubes. Then we can transfer them into a specimen baggie and date it and label it with the species and we'll put it in cold storage for the season. So we're preparing a habitat for this nest. We're gonna take it out of this temporary container and we're going to move it into a captive glass habitat that's vented on the top and we're going to allow the wasps to live in there while they pupate and become adult wasps. We're going to put in honey and water. And the way we do that is we just put a little dish of honey. And the wasps will feed on this honey. It's a little bit solidified, but that's okay. It melts off in the heat of the container once it goes into the habitat and liquefies again. And usually in about two days or so, all the wasps that are in the habitat that pupate out of these white silk caps, they'll be chewing their way out and becoming adult wasps soon. And when they do that, usually about every two days, three days, we'll collect them because they are coming out at a very rapid pace this time of year. And they'll eat this honey in a couple of days, and that way they'll be fed. And we just take paper towels, and we put a bunch of those in here. And the towels actually soak up the water. This way, the wasps that go into the habitat don't drown in the water container, which they will do uh, if you're not careful. You have to put something in there that will allow them to have moisture, but uh, not allow them to drown. So a paper towel in the water works fine, or a rag, soaked rag, whatever you have. Then we use just a crumpled up bunch of paper towels to make a level space for the honey dish. And then we can introduce this nest into the habitat. And the reason for the wire, you see the wire mashed down in the bottom, just old chicken wire. We put that at the bottom because there's a lot of moisture and debris that ends up at the bottom of the habitat. And you want this structure here to keep the nest dry. We're gonna flip the nest back over so that the comb you see here on the top is then on the bottom. That's the way it looks in nature. And we're gonna orient it that way and just set it inside. And eventually what you'll have is what you see next door here, very active nest of foragers, very active nest that will be ready to collect every couple of days as they pupate out. And down the bottom, we have another nest. This is Polistes diminula. It's a paper wasp nest. Here in this one, there's uh, an, an underground nest of yellow jackets that's pupating at the moment. All of these are incubating in captivity so they can be captured later and used for venom immunotherapy.
So we'll show you the transfer of this nest in a moment. All right, we're gonna have to do this transfer pretty quickly because it started to rain on us here. But the way you do this is you gently take out the paper first. So you can see most of that paper doesn't have any wasp in it, but it might, they might have crawled into any of these nooks and crannies, so you have to be careful. And you'll notice that they're very, very mellow right now. You can see the nest is not panicking. There's a bunch of wasps sitting on it. So you very slowly pick it up. Drop it in. And you see how most of them just stayed right on the nest the whole time. We're mostly looking to pupate the white silk caps into adult wasps. And that will happen several times over the next few days, each of these white silk caps will start to open up as the wasps chew their way out and become adults. And then we'll collect them on the nest. As you can see, there's plenty of activity in there. Lots of wasps already there. These are worker wasps, maybe the queen's in there somewhere. This should be a viable, healthy nest to work with. Should produce quite a number of live wasps. And we'll be able to collect these for venom immunotherapy. All right, it's been about 15 or 20 minutes, and now it's time to transfer the wasps from the dry ice container where they were flash frozen over to a baggie that they will go into for long-term freezing and they will stay in this baggie in a chest freezer for the entire season. At the end of the season, they'll be shipped to biomedical labs for use in venom immunotherapy. So the first thing you do is you gently tap. You wanna make sure all of your wasps are frozen solid, as they are here. And you very gently put them into the baggie because when they're frozen by dry ice, they're very delicate. And you wanna make sure the wasps stay whole. The labs will not take broken wasps. So very gently dump them into the baggie. and then check your container. There's usually a couple sticking in there. So you just tap it. Loosen those up, add them to the bag. Check again, make sure you have no hangers on. Do the same with the second collection. Check the container, make sure it's clean, no hangers on, looks good. When you take your specimen bagging, seal it well, get them ready for the chest freezer. Most of the larvae on the edges are workers. These will be regular worker wasps. So they have smaller cells. And then as you get toward the center of the nest with the newer comb, these become queen cells, which are quite a bit larger. 
This will be the queens for the next season. And sometimes they mix them up a little bit. You never quite know what you're gonna find on a nest. The taller cells you see, the tallest white silk caps, they tend to be the queens and the males, the reproductives. So that's it for today's episode. Thanks for riding along with us. As always, if you find these episodes entertaining or educational and you get some value out of them, please do like, share, subscribe, and comment to let us know you're there. We so appreciate the support we've received from the YouTube community. We're approaching 1,000 subscribers. Hard to believe, but it's finally happening. We appreciate that. All of you, every single viewer, made that happen. Stay tuned for more in 2024.